marriage counseling is not simple it's not easy because counseling is not teaching okay now we have talked about this uh, I'm not going to go over this the difference between male and female this we talked about earlier that people hurt each other in the family we're not going to talk about that now and then the vicious cycle in the marriage and uh, marriage and children and also family problem okay I'll go to the steps of marriage counseling for a couple that is willing to work on the marriage um, marriage single singular okay so marriage counseling is for couples who are willing what if one is not willing then um, then it's another kind of marriage, marriage counseling it's if they are not willing um, then we need to talk with the the person who is not willing and to find out why and whether he wants to put effort into the marriage and does he find it the spouse too troublesome therefore he is not willing or is it because his own faults that he's not willing to find out uh, if because it's because of the spouse the uh, the spouse is too troublesome nagging too much uh, is too negative then uh, we need to counsel the spouse who is negative and critical so that the other spouse is willing to go into counseling okay now it's very important to understand counseling counseling is not teaching the reason is now let me explain again what teaching is and what counseling is okay this is a person He's, he wants to learn something of the ministry then I teach teaching is for someone who is ready to change ready to learn then I teach counseling is for someone who doesn't know how to change or who has no he's not capable of changing who has problem changing they are facing some problem they don't know how to handle then we counsel when we counsel we don't just teach because you know people knows when they forgive each other they love each other they're kind to each other they communicate with each other then they build the marriage they, they know this but they just cannot do it so if we just teach them forgive each other be kind to each other love one another and then we just tell them this facts they will not change because they say we already know this I just won't, don't want to do it or they cannot do it so there are two problems one is they don't know what to do or they cannot do it or they don't want to do it you know they don't know what to do they uh, cannot do it they have no ability to do it or they don't want to do it so sometimes now why don't people want to build up the marriage because they they have an extramarital affair they dislike the spouse or they give up on the marriage or they have they're not committed to to put effort into marriage so they they don't want to put effort some people don't want to some people have no ability they don't know how to communicate they don't know how to talk they don't know how to listen and some people they just don't know what to do okay sometimes people know they should listen but they cannot because they they don't have the ability they have to learn actually it's something people need to learn so as pastors we need to learn how to communicate communicate includes a lot of listening now I have to say this many pastors don't know how to listen they don't they only know how to teach they only teach when they talk with a the member they always say do this do that do this you, you've done something wrong you've changed you have to change they never listen they don't ask we need to ask 
what happened, why it happened. It's very important we find out why. Sometimes pastors are slow to understand, slow to ask questions because we're used to teaching. We are the authority figure that we teach and everyone listen. So that's a problem. We just want people to listen to us. But very often people have problems. They have problem listening. And they have problem with, they don't know how to handle the problems. If they, we just teach them, they don't, they cannot just apply it. So we need to listen to them and find out what are the problems, what is the real situation, and how the wife treats the husband and how the husband treats the wife, how they interact. We need to understand all this. And, and when we listen, we need to hear what is happening. We need to hear what is going wrong, what is not going right. And we need to find out exactly where the problem is. And the way and the place where the husband, where the pastor learned to listen is through the wife. Okay? But most pastors don't like to listen to the wife. Now, there are two reasons. First reason, the wife is nagging too much, is too critical. And the reason, the pastor just never believed he should listen to the wife. He thinks that the wife should listen to him. He should never listen to the wife. So he doesn't listen to the wife. If a pastor doesn't listen to the wife, it is hard for him to listen to his members. He just wants people to listen to him, but he doesn't listen to people. Then he cannot be a good pastor. He's just a teacher. And his teaching might not be applicable to the life of people because he just teach from his own perspective. He never understand the perspective of other people. Our wives, <clears throat> the wife of a husband, of a pastor is very important that the wife will let the pastor know her feeling and let the pastor know the feeling of the other p members. Um, that pastor need to learn to listen to the wife and you know the wife says I have problem understanding your message and the, the husband might get very angry how come you don't understand because you don't pay attention so you don't understand and then the, the pastor the husband would have anger toward the wife instead he should find out why is it hard to listen to my message? What's wrong? Did I do anything wrong? How can I improve? So as a pastor, we need to put down our insecurity. Sometimes pastors are insecure too because we want people to praise us, to say you're a great pastor. When people say you're not doing so well, we feel unhappy. We, we feel insecure. So the wife should make him feel secure at the same time the wife can guide him and tell him that uh, your message is good in certain way and there are certain ways that you can improve there are certain ways that I understand you but there are certain ways that it's too theoretical I don't understand what you're saying and and tell the pastor and the pastor should learn to listen when he listened to the wife and listen to the children. Then he will listen to the church members. But in many families, they don't listen to the children because they say, think children are ignorant. Children, what they say is meaningless, so they don't listen. But we should learn to listen to children even from the childhood. When they talk, we listen to them. And we respect them and we you know, honor their needs. Now, if the child says, I, I, don't, I don't understand what you said about Jesus. 
the parents should not be angry, but the parents should say, okay, let me think of a way to explain to you about Jesus so that you understand Jesus. So the pastor should learn to explain to a child how to talk about Jesus, how to explain Jesus to a child. And to explain Jesus to a child and to explain Jesus to a man and to a woman are different. To a youngsters, are, it's all different. So when we explain um, Christianity, explain Jesus to different people, it's different. Because different people understand things differently. So when we listen, when we talk to a couple that have a marriage problems, they they are, you know, they're buried in their problems. They're unhappy. They, are, they may be angry. They may be frustrated. And then if the pastor just say, listen to me, repent, ask your wife to forgive you. The, the person might repent superficially, but he might not repent from his heart. So we need to listen. And when I counsel husband and wife, I will listen to both of them. I say, okay, tell me about the marriage, how it is now. And then they both tell me, and it's very often like this, that the wife would say, the husband doesn't listen to me. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't spend time with me. That is very common. And then the, the husband says, the wife doesn't, uh, it's not nice. The wife is always nagging, always emotional, unhappy demanding, uh, demand too much. So generally, they, they, you know, it's very common. The woman complain about the man's lack of care and lack of understanding. And the man will complain about the wife being emotional and demanding too much, asking too much and nagging too much. And uh, my response to them now, for many pastors, they would say, man, you should repent, woman, you should repent. But this is how I would tell them. I understand your situation. I know how it is. Because men and women are different. Because women like the husband to care for her. And, and you find that the husband doesn't listen to you. And so you feel frustrated. You feel unhappy. And then the man, you want the wife to respect you and to make you happy. But the wife now is always nagging and demanding too much. And he's, she's too emotional. So you're unhappy. And you don't understand each other. So I, I, name, I name the problems. And both sides, very often both sides say to me, Pastor, you're the only person who understands me even though they have friends, but the friends will not express how they understand the situation, how they understand their feelings. I understand the feelings. I have, first I have counseled many couples. I have my own marriage. I have faced my own marriage problems. I have handled my own marriage problems. I've studied about marriage. So I have a lot of experience, but I apply, I apply my teaching, my all I learned into my marriage, and I communicate with my wife. And I found that as a man, I can never fully understand a woman. As a man, I always still have this question, how come my wife demands so much? How come my wife demands so much attention? As a man, I still don't understand it, but I tell myself to, under, to accept that. That I told my wife, I will never be a woman. I will never be able to understand you totally, but I'll try my best. I'll try to remember. I remember. And I also like you to understand that when sometimes 
I did not pay attention to you, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means that because I'm business oriented, because as a man, we are task oriented, business oriented. So I tell her, please understand that sometimes when I neglect something about you, I forgot something about you, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means I'm concentrated in the business. So I tell her, help her to understand me as a man and I help myself to understand her as a woman. So I would tell my, the, the couple and say, I understand you both. And I tell them why it is hard to have a good marriage, why it is hard for the husband to listen to the wife when the wife is nagging. So I would say to the wife, try to explain your situation in a peaceful way and try to help your, under, your husband to understand instead of criticizing him. When you're criticizing him, you attack him, immediately he will defend. Instead of attacking your husband, you say, I like you to do this. When you do this, I'm very happy. When you listen to me, I'm very happy. Then you are approaching the problem together. So I would tell them the differences of the sexes, that the female wants attention and care and love and listening and wants her feelings to be understood and responded to. And then the man wants the wife to respect him and honor him, make him happy and, uh, and not to nag him, but to uh, discuss things, talk about things in a peaceful way. So I explained to both of them why you know, it's difficult and why they suffer and there is hope if they are willing. There is hope if they are willing to work on a marriage and how they can work on a marriage, marriage. And then I will also give them training how to work on a marriage. Okay, so this is uh, briefly what I do in the marriage counseling. Let me explain again. I would express my understanding of the problems. I will express, understand your situation. I understand your feelings. I know how you feel. I know it's difficult. I, you, I know you feel frustrated. And I help the husband also to understand the feeling of the wife. Do you understand her? Do you understand when she says that uh, you don't listen to her and she feel neglected? Do you understand her? And he might say, I don't understand. Then I will explain again and again. Now, she has, is facing some problem. She is facing some difficulty taking care of the children or in her own emotional life. She is unhappy. And she likes to talk to you, not to complain, but to tell you. But maybe her tone of voice makes you feel that she's complaining, but actually she is just telling you how she feels. And she also needs to learn to not to complain when she talks about her feelings and just tell you how she feels. And then when you cannot understand her fully, you can say to her, please tell me again, please help me to understand you. I, I need to understand you. I don't quite understand you. The husband needs to ex say that. And then the wife should not be frustrated. The wife should learn to understand that it's hard for the husband to understand her. Now, this is funny to some women. <laughs> they say, how come it's so hard for the man to understand me? That is how it is. Now, in Chinese, we have an expression. The expression is, the heart of a woman is like a needle in the middle of the ocean. What it means is like this. If you lost a needle in the middle of the ocean, it's very hard to find the needle. You don't know where the needle fall to. And it's very hard to understand the heart of a woman. You don't know what she's thinking from the perspective of a man. Because men just think of facts. Men don't think of feelings. 
For instance, the wife has problem with the mother-in-law, and the mother and the wife tells the husband, "Your mother-in-law yells at me, and I feel very unhappy." And then the husband immediately think, "Wow, there is a problem with my wife and my mother." And wife, you should listen to my mother. You should not take her words seriously. You should be calm and peaceful and be nice to her and apologize to her. Okay, so the husband just tell the wife what to what to do, and the wife feel very angry because the husband doesn't understand her at all. She is being mistreated by the. Mother-in-law, and she wants the husband to understand her, and the husband only tell her to understand his mother. So she feel frustrated, and the more she wants to talk to the husband, the more frustrated the man is, and the man doesn't want to talk anymore. So that blocks the relationship, and the man cannot understand. How come my wife is always angry with my mother, and how come my mother is always angry with my wife? And and he doesn't know how to handle it. He need to. What does he need to do? He need to understand the feeling of his wife. He need to understand the feeling of his mother. It's very difficult. It's very very difficult. He need to say to his wife, "I know that it's very difficult for you." Um, for my mother to talk with you and for you to talk with her, I know that sometimes she says things that make you feel unhappy. She wants you to do certain things in her way. Now, they should not pass these words to the mother <coughs> and say to the mother, "My wife doesn't like the way how you are." <laughs> Then there was. Then he would start a fight of the mother-in-law with the with the daughter-in-law. He should say to the wife, "I know that my mother sometimes, you know, he put pressure, she put pressure on you and make you feel unhappy, and you have pressure. I understand this. I feel sorry for this. I'm sorry for this, and I I love you. I care about you. I want to comfort you." And、uh, we can face this problem together. And I try to comfort my mother. I try to change my mother. It might be hard for her to change, and、uh, so sometimes it's needed that you understand her. But at the same time, I understand you. Now, it's very important that a husband would say to the wife, "I understand your needs. It's hard hard for my mother to change, and I try to." Uh, change my mother, but I might not succeed. But at least I tell you, I love you, I care about you. I I want you to feel comfortable with me. I want you to feel comforted with me. Even though now we have problem with my mother, I know there's a problem here now. So when he talks like that, he tells the wife. He knows the problem the wife is facing. And they are facing it together, and he cares about the feeling of his wife, and he says, "I know that you are unhappy." Now, it's very also very important for the husband to understand this. After he says this, the wife would still feel unhappy. He might need the wife might need some time to calm down. The wife might need some time for him to hug her, hug her, and hold her. And comfort her, so that she would be comforted and become peaceful again. It takes time for her to calm down. But many husbands have problem doing that. Many husbands have problem calming down the wife、uh, because he doesn't want to listen to the wife. So. The husband need to learn to listen to the wife. So, as a counselor, 
we need to guide both of them to understand each other. This is not easy. We have to let the husband know this is how your wife feels. Do you understand her feeling? Um, can you name her feeling? Can you describe her feeling? And, uh, and then the pastor would try to explain the feeling of the wife to the husband and help the husband to understand. And then the pastor will also help the wife to understand the feeling of the husband. So that is the job of a counselor. The couple has problem communicating with each other. He is the middleman to help each other, help them to communicate each other and how to understand each other. And sometimes some people have problem understanding feelings or remembering feelings. I have counseled a couple. Okay, so here is the wife. The wife tells the husband, actually at that time they were not husband and wife yet. They were not married yet. So the, the girlfriend tells later they were married. The girlfriend told the boyfriend, I have this feeling, one, two, three. And then I asked the boyfriend, can you tell me the feeling of your girlfriend? 